So economics is the study of choice and how we make people better off in terms of their living standards. So why do we need choices in the first place? What if we could have everything that we wanted so that our material living standards and non-material living standards could both be satisfied? So here comes in the problem of relative scarcity and that is where our resources are limited. So our land, labour and capital resources are limited compared to our unlimited needs and wants. And this means that the resources available cannot satisfy everything that we need and want and so choices have to be made on where to allocate these resources. So as a nation for instance we would like to have far more than we can possibly produce. Let's, let's uh, see where these needs and wants originate from different parts of the economy. So first of all the most obvious need and want is from a consumer or a household's perspective. Consumer plus household. Obviously our needs are our basic survival needs. So our needs may include water, shelter, food, uh, clothing, some may argue education, and even safety. So these are basically an idea of our needs and pe many people dif are different and so many people's needs um, dif differ from each other. And our wants however may be infinite and these are infinite and there lies the problem of relative scarcity is because our wants are infinite compared to our resources and our, our needs may be finite but it can be argued to be infinite as well. So let's look at our wants. We want maybe a car, a house, we want to travel, we want nice clothes, maybe one iPhone as well, and this list goes on and on. So I, ca I can't give you a con um, a concise list of what wants our wants are because they're subjective and people um, are different in their wants. But all, all I can say is that our wants are infinite compared to the resources which are limited. Okay. Another problem that even exacerbates uh, this issue of relative scarcity is that many of our wants, needs and wants recur. So our need for water, we can't just buy say 10 litres of water and expect that those 10 litres to satisfy us for the rest of our life. Similarly, we can't just buy uh, one basket of food and expect that food to keep us uh, satisfied or to um, remove our hunger for the rest of our life. And as, as well as that, our clothing. Our clothing sometimes wear, uh, is subject to wear and tear and so we can't just buy, say, one shirt and wear that for the rest of our life. Also what exacerbates this idea of relative scarcity is that our population tends to grow. So our population. At the moment we have recurring needs plus wants and also we have population growth. Population growth. When the population grows, our unlimited needs and wants become even more unlimited because it doubles up. And that's a concept that we have to understand when talking about relative scarcity. And also Advertising, fashion, and planned obsolescence also affect this idea that sometimes our needs and wants change. So our want, say for a car, 20 years ago I would have been happy, or everyone would have been happy with a, say, let's say a, a Holden. But now as fashion changes and as, as we become more richer and as we become more um, exposed to advertising, maybe this, maybe we would want a BMW now. And so this shows that our needs and wants change over time and which makes it even more unlimited. That's the household and consumer sector and how needs and wants are unlimited um, according to them. Now let's look at the business sector and how their needs and wants are similarly unlimited. So the business sector. 
business sector. What do businesses require to produce goods and services? They require uh, resources. And resources come in the form of labor, land, and capital. So businesses require want to make uh, large profits and so they require skilled labor. And as we know, skilled labor is a limited resource. Businesses will tend to compete for the most skilled labor so they become more efficient and so this resource is scared, but businesses but businesses are unlimited and therefore their needs and want for the labor is therefore unlimited. Similarly, their spending decisions are constricted by financing. So they want infinite money. So what they want is infinite money. But as we've all been taught since we were a little child, money doesn't grow on trees. And so this serves as another uh, limited resource that businesses uh, can obtain. So money is a limited resource. So now that is just a basic understanding of how businesses also have unlimited needs and wants. Let's move on to the government sector and how the government sector also has unlimited needs and wants. So what? So the business of so the government uh, is a so this is, the government is a sector which um, produces public goods and services. Government sector. They produce our transportation networks. They produce uh, the telecommunication until it was privatized a few years ago. They have produced um, health, education, and other um, goods and services. So what the government has is they must obtain capital equipment, land, finished consumer goods, and the services of staff such as uh, economists, teachers, um, defense personnel, all to satisfy, um, all to satisfy their unlimited needs and wants. And what this means is that they also need to finance their um, spending, and they also need money. And so we can see that the government sector also has unlimited needs and wants. So because they could never have enough teachers, for example, in the education sector, or they could never have enough doctors in the health sector, or they could never have um, techno technological um, improvements in transportation, for example. So they could never uh, have an upwards limit to the effectiveness of transportation or telecommunication. So their needs and wants are also unlimited. So as we can see, relative scarcity is a problem where our resources are limited, but our needs and wants are unlimited. And so economists must make choices so that we allocate these resources to maximize our living standards. And that comes back to the core problem of economics, which is to maximize living standards. So to recap, relative scarcity, our needs and wants are unlimited, but our resources are limited. And so choices have to be made so that we maximize our living standards.